Because agricultural aircraft operate under such severe conditions, they are subject to rigorous mechanical checks by the engineers of the Department of Civil Aviation. The department controls many aspects of the industry's operations, aircraft design, manufacture and maintenance, pilot training, and particularly safety measures. Head of the Department of Civil Aviation is the Director General, Mr. D.G. Anderson. Our airworthiness engineers began and are still doing some very original and valuable research into the stresses imposed on agricultural aircraft. The results have been quite dramatic. Despite an enormous increase in hours flown, the accident rate has dropped by almost 200%. Also, we are annually offering scholarships to help young Australians undertake the specialised training necessary for agricultural flying. The industry's first training schools have been set up at Moorabbin in Victoria and at Bankstown, New South Wales. Pilots who hold a commercial licence are trained by an instructor with long experience in agricultural aviation. The trainee puts in up to 50 hours of dual control flying before his final tests. Lectures are given on flying theory as well as a basic course in agronomy and chemistry. Final tests conducted by an examiner from the Department of Civil Aviation ensure that the trainee is qualified and suited to a career as an agricultural pilot. Among the pilots working in the industry are men from many lands who have made a new home in Australia. Many have been Air Force pilots. Some have served with international passenger airlines. Their specialist training in agricultural work enables them to talk to the farmer, understanding the work to be done, and the most efficient and economical way of doing it. For the lucky pilot, there's sometimes morning or afternoon tea served by the farmer's family. But his main concern is the work to be done and the best way of doing it. New uses are constantly found for agricultural aircraft. Pine plantations are being damaged by rabbits who eat the bark of the young pine trees, ring barking the saplings. Carrots are the answer. Carrots chopped up and impregnated with poison. And dropped from an aircraft. Bingo baits are also dropped from aircraft to protect sheep. From Port Lincoln in South Australia, an aircraft flies over the tuna fishing grounds. When the pilot sights a school of fish, he reports the location to the fishing trawlers below, who move in for the catch. All over the Australian countryside, the work goes on. Spreading seed and fertilizers, spraying weeds and insect pests, protecting crops, assisting primary industry to produce more. Today, agricultural aviation is estimated to be earning 40 million pounds of Australia's export income. For the small farmer, as for big properties like Mirani in New South Wales, the King Ranch cattle stations in several states, or the great wheat and sheep property of Eregulla Springs in Western Australia, aircraft are a major factor, increasing yields from pastures and crops. The expansion of primary production, assisted by agricultural aviation, is having far-reaching effects on other sections of industry and commerce. A greater demand on the mines producing parietes used in the manufacture of chemicals. The construction of plants in every state turning out new and improved fertilizers, insecticides and weed killers. 
Increased yields from the land bring the need for more transport, greater storage facilities, more ports, and more shipping to export surplus production. The fast-growing cities and towns add to the world's demand for more food for increased production from primary industry. Agricultural aviation is now an essential part of the Australian economy. Today, and even more in the future, increased production from the land depends on the men and machines of the agricultural aviation industry.